welcome to Marie's Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. Today is a tutorial, but we're actually not going to make anything. I have had a lot of questions about fusibles. Fusible fleece, fusible interfacing, using cotton batting in its place, and all sorts of things. So I thought today we would go over what I have in stock because believe me, I don't have everything that I wish I did. I'm out of two that I normally have, but I can still explain for the most part what we're going to need. I'm also going to talk about wonder tape. So we're going to talk about fusibles, cotton batting, wonder tape, how and when to use these and different tips and tricks for using these things in our sewing projects. So if this is something that you're interested in, I hope you stick around. And if you stick around, please give me a thumbs up. That like really helps. And if you haven't subscribed already, please feel free to click the subscribe button and then go up and click the bell so that you get all notifications. So let's go talk about interfacing. So the first thing I'm going to show you today is how to use Wonder Tape. Now, Matthew over at Mr. Domestic was the first one. He introduced me to Wonder Tape and it is a wonder because I wouldn't do a zipper. For the longest time, I just would not put a zipper in. I thought they were difficult. Uh, now that I'm very comfortable with them, I don't know why I waited so long. But this is the stuff that got me started. Okay. Now, the very first one I had is this roll right here. And this is different from this. Even though it's Wonder Tape, this is 1 8 inch. Whereas this is quarter inch. Now they're both they're both usable. I can use them. It's not a problem. And what you do with this is you place your say this is a bag maybe that I'm making a bag, okay? And maybe I'm not comfortable just pinning or clipping my zipper into place. So what I would do is I would run a bead or run a little strip of wonder tape along there. Let's see. So what it is, is when you lay it down, you'll feel that it's sticky on one side. The side that's down against the fabric is sticky, but the side that's up doesn't feel sticky at all. So then what you do, is you grab your iron and you just press it for a couple of seconds. And then as soon as it cools, you take the corner. Yeah, I say that. You have to peel up the corner. Let's see. Because if it doesn't stick the first time, you can give it a little bit more heat. It usually just takes a second or two. All right. Let's see if I can show you what that looks like. I think you can see that there is a layer there. All right, so now that's a little bit sticky. So then you would place your zipper down and just touching this edge with the iron, you would iron. I don't want to do that because I don't want to waste my zipper, but you get to see, you would just press the iron right where my thumb is going and give it a little bit of heat, and that would hold it in place much better than pins or clover clips would do, and it's going to hold that zipper nice and straight for you. So if you're a beginner at zippers, this Wonder Tape can be your best friend. Now, if you use the quarter inch tape, it does work for a zipper because that's about what your seam allowance is. But I have had this, you know, kind of stick out. Now it is washable. The first time you wash that, that's going to go away. But if you're gifting it, you don't want to wash it. So you could buy the, the 
eighth of an inch. Well, what if you can't find the eighth inch? Because I can't. <laughs> My son and daughter-in-law picked this up one time uh, when they drove to Bangor, and I haven't been able to get it since. So this is what I do. Let's say I need some wonder tape for something. I don't use them anymore on zippers, but let's pretend. So as you can see, I stuck it down to my mat and I have two pieces. I guess I shouldn't have stuck it that well, but you get the drift. See, that's perfectly usable. And use that just like I just did on that other one. Okay. Maybe not push it down as hard as I did, but just set it down there and see it's perfectly usable in two strips. So you can use your quarter inch and kind of cut it in half. Okay. So what's another use for Wonder Tape? Because I have all this Wonder Tape and now I don't need it for zippers. Well, Actually, I shouldn't say that. I made a bag a few weeks ago that was kind of tricky. And I needed it because the zipper didn't go in in a straight line like this. So I did use some Wonder Tape. But there are other times where I use Wonder Tape. Whoops, throwing stuff around my sewing room here. Okay, now this is one of my open wide zippered bags that I made. Now, if you were with me on that tutorial, you'll remember how this zipper pull tab goes like this. And you pin it here, and you hope that it stays in place. Sometimes when I sew that, it will move a little bit like that, or it won't, you know, it just won't be where I want it to be. All right, so we'll take two little pieces. And we'll press them down, one on each side. And you don't have to be particular because you just need them to be under the edge of the fabric. And as long as they don't show, you're good. They're just going to hold your fabric in place while you stitch. So you lift up the corner. And sometimes you have to go to the second corner or a third corner to get it. But usually if you let it cool, it will come up fairly easily. Okay, so now I fold this down where I want it to be. And I'm going to press that in place. And that's going to hold that there, see? Enough so that I can stitch around there. And I can still put pins in there to help hold if I wanted to, or I can just leave the little wonder tape in place. So that is a little bit about the wash away wonder tape. And this actually is the same brand. If you look, it says Dritz quilting and Dritz. I guess I'm not really sure what the difference is because they're both one quarter inch by 10 yard cuts. But as I said, I preferred the 1 8 inch when I started out with zippers, but you can make it yourself. Okay, now we're going to go on and start talking about our fusibles. So, as I said in my introduction, I don't have all of the fusible fleeces and interfacings that I normally work with, but what I do have, I will show you. But first off, I wanted to tell you a few just tips. These aren't tricks. This is just a couple of things. Always prepare your fabric first by pressing it. Okay. You don't want to use any sizing or spray starch. It might still stick on there if you do, but your chances <laughs> are slimmer, so I would say don't use any product on your fabric. Just press it and that's it. You should also have a steam cloth available. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is the directions that come with fusibles are 
usually lacking a lot of information. And a lot of times, it isn't even what works. They will tell you to do it one way, and it doesn't work that way. I actually had a conversation one time. The first time I used fusible interfacings, I was making a t-shirt quilt for a friend. And I went to Walmart, and I bought like three yards of the Pellon. And I can't remember, but I almost think it was the 808 Craft Fuse. But either way, I came home, I read the directions, and it didn't work. And I kept trying. And I went to Google, and it said to use a hotter iron and a press cloth, and someone said spray it, you know, all these different things. Nothing worked. Parts of it would try to stick, but it wouldn't stick. So I ended up calling the company. And I had to video chat with one of their representatives who could see plainly that I was following her direction, but it wasn't sticking. They sent me a whole bolt of it for my inconvenience. So they sent me, I think it was a 60 or $70 product at the time. And then when they wrote me a letter later on, it was the whole batch. So it wasn't just me. But I, I guess I'm just telling you that story to let you know that it doesn't always work. And sometimes you just need to give it a little, little bit extra care to make it go. Okay, so this one that I'm going to show you is Pelon 973. Now this says to use the wool steam setting, which I have it on. So I have it on wool and I'm going to turn my steam up. Now, the first thing I would say is you could put a press cloth, a damp press cloth, over this. I like to see where it's going, okay? So I tend to do this sort of thing. If I know I have this placed exactly where I want it, then I will hold it and flip it like this, okay? Now, I'm going to hold that, and I can hear the steam. I'm just slowly moving it back and forth, okay? I am a huge believer that you need steam on almost every fusible, whether they tell you you do or not. The second thing you need is a hot iron. I don't know if you noticed, but my iron has synthetic, silk, wool, cotton, and linen. So I've got one setting higher than cotton. And most fusibles, I put it on the linen setting because anyone with any experience on these things, and believe me, I don't have as much as some people might have, but anyone with a lot of experience will tell you the hotter the iron, the better. Okay, so let's see how that fused. I know we're supposed to let it cool, but look, Already you can tell it doesn't want to lift, okay? So we got a good bond there. That's perfect. We also have quite a firm product. This would make a great bag, like what I was just showing you. Uh, it might be a little thick for a wallet, all right? But you can quilt through it. And I recommend that you quilt through these thicker fleeces. Some people don't. I have had them after they were washed. I have made some grocery bags and a couple of purses where this fusible started to separate. So I do quilt it. I have not had any issues with my needle being gummy afterwards, but if it is, you can take it out and clean it with rubbing alcohol, or you can use it as a perfect time to switch your needle out. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now, this one is just a little bit thinner, all right? And I, I guess I should have mentioned, it's always whatever the rough side is, that's the glue side, and it's always against the wrong side of the fabric, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing. Now, this direction for the 987 on my package just tells me to hold the iron on it for 10 seconds. It doesn't say to use steam or not, doesn't say to use a press cloth, doesn't even tell me 
which temperature to use. So see, this is what I'm saying. A lot of times you're on your own with these things. So again, I use normally, let's see, I'm going to move that up because I like the linen. I like the nice hot setting because that melts that glue right to your fabric without even having to guess on whether it's staying or not because it will. So you always want to let it cool. You don't want to start shifting your fabric. You don't want to, like, say you had to find the, the middle of it for something. You don't want to start folding it and uh, really handling your fabric until that's cool because it can get distorted. All right, let's see what the next one is. All right, this one is Craft Fuse 808. And this is thin. This doesn't have a fleecy feeling like this does. These two both have like a, they kind of feel like felt. This one is just more like a thin cloth feeling, cloth paper mix, all right? So we're going to hold that on there. It told me that I should use a steam cloth and the wool and steam setting. So even though I have it hotter, I have my steam all the way up, or I can use the press cloth. The moisture always helps the glue. It always helps it. I forgot to show you that this one is still a firm one. This would be better for like a coin purse or a wallet that didn't need something as thick as the first one, which was 973. And this is the Craft Fuse 808. This gives quite a firm feel to it. You can almost fold it. It almost feels like you could use it just like that. And I'm sure for a lot of things you could. All right, let's go on to the next one. Now this is a mystery piece. I have a whole big bag full of scraps, how'd you guess, of fleeces and, and interfacings and such. The problem is I didn't uh, label them. <laughs> but most of the time I can tell by sight about what it's going to do. Now you can see that the shiny side of this has glue. That's the shiny side. And then there's a dull side. So that looks like it needs a little bit of a press because it had a few wrinkles. And remember, you want to take those out first. Then we're going to place that down. Let's just change it up a little bit here and use the press cloth. Now hold that for a few seconds. It's always good to kind of keep your iron moving a little bit. This press cloth that I'm using is just a piece of muslin. That's what I generally use as a press cloth. Okay, now you see that? Didn't want to stick. I did everything that the directions told me I should do, but it doesn't want to stick. So, Hold it longer. In fact, I'll turn the steam all the way up. A lot of times when I'm making bags, sometimes I'll put a fusible fleece on the outer part and then on the lining, I'll use something like this one here. Just, it depends on how I want that bag to be. You know, do I want it to stand up on its own? Or, you know, how firm or how soft do you really want it to be? All right, let's see what we have here. Oh, I think that one's, oh, see, there's still a little bit, but we're going to let it cool. It's sticking better than it was. See, this could be that one that I had trouble with and they replaced, for all I know. And I think, I think it probably is. Uh, the stuff that I had to call them about that wouldn't stay stuck. But this is going to be an example of something. Anyway, I wanted to show you something. Let's say you wanted something pretty firm, but all you had 
was some thinner interfacing. You didn't have anything strong. Did you know that you can layer these? You can take, as soon as you have one stuck down, put another one, glue side down against it, and let that stick. It's easier to do with like an SF-101, which is a woven interfacing. Uh, and what I mean by a woven interfacing is when you take it out of the package, it doesn't look like these ones. These ones look like a cotton batting or a fleece. They look like a piece of felt. The woven, like the SF-101, will have weaves of the fabric, just like cotton. If you look close up at a piece of cotton, you can tell the weave. And that's how the SF-101. And I use that one a lot, but I happen to be out of it and need to order some. I'm going to give this a good press. So the first thing you want to ask yourself if your, if your fusible does not stick is, number one, is your iron hot enough? So if it tells you to use a wool setting and you've done that and you held it down as long as it said, try bumping the heat up a little bit. If that doesn't work, make sure your steam is on and try that. And a good press cloth is always a great idea. I'm guilty of not always using them when I should, but I do know how well they work. Now this, as soon as it cools, is going to be perfect. That's stuck this time, and boy is that hot. <laughs> we'll let that cool. But that gave a lot of firmness. That gave a lot of body to that piece of fabric. So depending on what you needed it to do, I have also taken one like what I just used and used it on top of a piece of the fleecier stuff. Or you could combine these. Give it a shot. If you need something and you don't have it, try mixing a couple and seeing what you get. All right. Now, this is, whoops, this is the Pelon 931. And this tells me that I need a damp press cloth, so I just happen to have another one. Now, this is really thin stuff, really thin stuff. And it looks like there's little dots all over it. Of course, that's the glue. So I'm going to hold that down. And as usual, I like to turn mine over. Because sometimes when I use a press cloth, I, I tend to move the, the uh, interfacing from where I really wanted it to be. Okay, so again, this was Pelon 931F, F for fusible. And it tells me a hot iron with a damp cloth. So I'm doing just what the directions said. Although I have added steam because there again, the cloth is giving you the steam, so steam can't be a bad thing. I'm going to let that cool. That's nice and hot. I did look for the uh, ShapeFlex 101. Yeah, ShapeFlex 101 yesterday, but they didn't have any at my local Walmart, and I use that a lot. Okay. So let's compare this. See how foldable that is? You can scrunch it up. It actually almost feels like another layer of cotton. So if you wanted something really light, you didn't need a whole lot of body, that would be what I would use. This is almost like one step up from this, okay? Oh, and now we have something else. <laughs> This is Pelon 911, and we used this a few weeks ago for something. I can't remember what it was at the time because I just remember saying it during a video. But this tells me it will take 10 seconds on the wool steam setting. Let's give it a try. Lots of steam. My iron's hotter than wool. I've never had an interfacing burn. I suppose there's a first time for everything. But we're going to try it just on that, on the, what is it again? The linen setting. And that looks like it stuck right to it, just like glue. 
stuck right on there. Now that's a lightweight one. That's comparable to the 931. It's just a little bit lighter. And then to confuse you even more, I'm going to start talking about some heat and bond. Now you may have seen that I use this heat and bond quite often. I'll, I'll use it for applique purposes and such like that. So there's a heat and bond that you can sew through and a no-sew heat and bond that will just applique things on that stay. But did you know that heat and bond makes this stuff right here? So when you go to the store and you see these two products, how are you supposed to know which is which? You need to just pay attention up here. Now see, this one says iron-on adhesive. And this one tells you that it's fusible interfacing, which is like what we were just using, okay? And there's also a heat and bond that will iron vinyl. Now this is clear. And how I used this was, uh, I was making candy bags where you would take Say at Halloween time when you get the bags of Reese cups or M and M's, you would I would save those and you know be real careful on how I opened the bag, and then I would cut a piece of this clear vinyl, and you place it right over top of that. Of course, you can put it over fabric. It makes a waterproof fabric, and this irons on, and it's comparable to how we iron these on. Okay, so there is such a product as that. Now, um, while I'm right here, I and we're talking about the iron and the heat and all this, let's give the creative word of the day and let's call the creative word of the day hot because our iron is hot today. So let's say you're working with some fusibles and you make a mistake, okay? What if this stuff was up close to the corner? Like, say you had to cut something three by four and your interfacing is cut three by four and it went over, it overlapped and now it's stuck down. What can you do about that? Well, the first thing you do if you get fusible on your ironing board cover is take a damp cloth and I would keep it pretty wet. Okay, let's pretend that there's a piece of glue stuff right here. Okay, I would take a fairly wet cloth and I'd go like this with lots of steam. And while it's still hot, I'd try to lift that up out of there. You can use rubbing alcohol if you want to, but be careful putting the heat over it. Make sure you wash it. Okay. And again, if you quilt through your fusible and you somehow get your needle gummy, you can use rubbing alcohol on that. Um, so right now, I would say that's what I have for you on fusibles. I use them a lot. I use them in bags all the time, whether it be the lining. You can use them behind linings if you're putting in snaps, buttons, zippers, whatever. It helps hold things in place. The interfacing is going to be thinner than a fusible fleece. As you can see, they're thinner, but they still give stability to what you're making. And you know, I didn't always have all these. I bought them a little bit here and a little bit there because they can be expensive. Um, so it takes a while to build them up. So I'm going to list everything in the description box below because today we used Wonder Tape. We used Pelon 973, Pelon 987, Craft Fuse 808, Pelon 931, and Pelon 911. And we talked about SF 101. So that's what I have. Oh, actually, I do have something else. What if your fusible, what if your gummy stuff gets on your iron? What are you going to do? This is what I use. 
It's called Faultless Hot Iron Cleaner. And you can tell that this tube used to be full. I actually haven't used it for about a year because I have been getting so much better at not getting sticky stuff on my iron. Now this isn't one of those irons that you put down and it pops up like some of them have. That's way more money than I have. Uh, but this is a heavy duty iron. I really like it. Oh, wow. I think that's coming off there. <laughs> I'll take it off. Um, I like that it has the linen setting because it gives me that heat that we need. When we want a crease, we want a crease and nothing does that better than a hot iron. But anyway, uh, this hot iron cleaner works fantastic. I used to buy the little teeny tiny tube of it and it was hard to get everything out of the tube. This was a much better option. It was a little bit more expensive, but uh, the other product, which was the same brand, it just came in such a, an awkward little container that you had to cut it open to get all the product out. And it, it just wasn't a cool deal at all. So I hope that I taught you at least one or two things that you didn't know, or maybe I took some of the mystery out of some of the fusibles that are available and how to use them. But I want to thank you for for sticking around and watching, hanging out with me today on a tutorial. And until next time, I'm going to say bye-bye. I hope you take care, dig into that scrap pile, make something beautiful, be creative, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Take care.